Hey everyone, welcome back to Open. Our next guest is an accomplished actor who has appeared in a variety of TV and films throughout the decades from roles in Law and Order and NYPD Blue to Do the Right Thing and The Devil's Own. He's now taken the role of director for the upcoming play, A Day in the Crib, and he's here to share more. Please welcome actor, director, and my good friend, Sixto Ramos. Hello, Sixto. Hey, thank you so much. Oh my God, I'm so excited to see you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Wow. I'm excited for you. I'm excited for you. Um, I will say, in, uh, I'd like to open up with just acknowledging um, those of us who have been able to sustain uh, this career in a way that we're still a contribution to our community. And so to have you on and sharing uh, that, that you're now going to be directing this amazing play that's written by Felix Rojas, who I happen to be a fan of. It, it's really, it's refreshing. It's refreshing. So I want to congratulate you on taking that seat. Oh my God, thank you so much. I appreciate that. It is a big undertaking and it is scary, but I, I, I quote Mike Tyson when he says, you know, if you're scared, do it, do it anyway, do it anyway, if it's important. I think this is important. And I've been through a lot. You know, this whole thing with the pandemic has made people uh, realize a lot of things. And I said, man, Lord, you gave me this opportunity. And for a long time, I wasn't doing this. And I came back to it. And um, I studied with Bill Esper at the William Esper Studio, one of the best acting schools in the country. And I graduated the program, the only Puerto Rican at that time in that class. And I was scared. And I remember when uh, one time I broke down in the class and I was crying and my teacher goes, what do you want from me? What do you want me to do? You want me to tell you that you're good, that you're funny, not to stop? Then I'm right. going to tell you, then don't stop. Sit the hell down. And I was like, she was tough. But I got through it. And uh, I know, you know, we share that in common, by the way. I did the master's program with Bill Esper as well. I do what? went to the Esper studio. Oh and my God. I, thought, yes. I studied under Suzanne first, his wife, Suzanne yes. Esper. And then I did the master's program with Mr. William Esper himself. As I well. cannot believe it. I, oh my God, I didn't know that. Yes. Isn't that great? Isn't that great? Yeah. So oh I didn't know we had that in common, but I needed yeah. to share that. But yeah. with, about you it is about you and this new chapter and you know i didn't make mention of your podcast uh but you did have this podcast going i don't know if you still have it going the sixto ramo show uh but the idea really is that you're wearing these multiple hats in a way that is uh being you're making a conscious effort in making sure that we're represented right through either through our voices and or our stories because felix writes urban stories which is yes. why i'm a fan of his yes and, and and so am i so am i i met Felix Rojas, because a colleague of mine in 2019 said, hey, Sixto, may I make a suggestion? There's this writer, his name is Felix Rojas, and I worked with him before. Can we have him on the show? And I said, well, tell me about him. And he started telling me, I said, that'd be great. Bring him. Any Latino, Puerto Rican, Dominican, Cuban, Mexican, I am for it. I am pro-Latino, and I want our people and our voices to be heard. So he was on the show. And, you know, we had a crazy off-the-wall kind of show. Nothing was off-limit. And we just started joking about it. He was like, oh, wow. You know, he said, you know, I, you know, I'd like to have you one day uh, act in one of my plays or something. I said, oh, that'd be good, but I'm not interested in that anymore. I said, to him and hence comes the pandemic and in 2020 he reached out to me and he had this play a day in the crib that he wrote so we had a we had a a, a reading of it through zoom which was really like a, yeah it was like a disaster because i've never done anything like that people are walking away and stuff but we did it just for us, <laughs> just for us. i got just the visual i got the visual cameras oh. off Meanwhile, the camera's the off, <laughs> people, yeah, there's a dog barking, a baby crying in the back. I, we heard all this. So we we, we had the, the, the reading of the play just to hear it, just to hear it. And I said, wow, there's something here. Left it. Comes two years later. It's 2022. It's December. A lot of things have happened in my life. Uh, that some of them not good and all that, but we're still moving forward. And well, you're here though. You're here though. I mean, there's yeah. you know the the transitions have been really, really real and severe and extreme within yes. the past years. Yes, 
Yes, for everyone. Boom, I wake up one day and I said, I want to direct the play. And so I got in contact with Felix Rojas and I said, I'd like to direct the play. And he paused and he goes, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. So this is how the whole process started. That was December 1st professional reading was at uh, on March 14th. And we had a- March 14th, 2023 though. You started yes. in December uh, as far as taking on the director's role, but your actual first mounting of it uh, to read in front of an audience uh, in person, which is the key word was uh, March 14th of 2023. Yes, absolutely. And it was crazy because it was like snowing that day and they predicted a storm, but about almost a hundred people showed up to the to the reading. And a lot of people and, and, and my family came to see it and friends came to see it. And the consensus was six oh, this could be done. And I said, Yeah. So this is what, you know, just keeping that little flame alive that every day I'm going to push forward. It's not easy. There's a lot of legalities and stuff like that when you're producing a play and, and unions and stuff, but we are working through it. That's beautiful. And, and since you're mentioning the producing aspect, I did. Um, I introduced you as the director, uh, but our conversation prior to the interview, you shared that you are also the producer of this particular, uh, I mm -hmm. guess, run, as well as your... Uh, you've taken on the lead role for the reading uh, mm -hmm. that's going to be happening in June, uh, J June 22nd. June 22nd, 2023 at La Mama Theater. Yeah, it's legendary. It's been in, in, in business for 61 years and they do experimental theater. They brought a lot of plays that go to Broadway and I'm just so fortunate and appreciate them because they, they have my back. You know? That's awesome. Well, yeah, I mean, they're they're legendary within their own right. But give us a little background on what a day in the crib is about. <laughs> wow! <laughs> I mean, wow! The title itself is like yeah, a yeah, day in the crib, you know? right? Because it all happens this in one day, and a day in the crib is about a couple that have been together, uh, high school sweethearts, for twenty years, and they have a sixteen-year-old daughter. And for some reason, you know, their their romance has has lost that shine. And uh, Tony, the lead character, is a doorman. And he goes to work every day. And every day, it's kind of mundane and routine. And one day, he meets this lady that was looking for an address. And he gives her the address. And they start talking. And lo and behold, they have an affair. <gasps> an affair. And the daughter, he accidentally leaves his phone at home. And he goes to work and the daughter hears the phone, picks it up and says, mom, who's Benkis? And she goes, I don't know any Benkis. Well, dad does. He left the phone here. Mother grabs the phone and she looks at it. And to her surprise, she sees all these text messages. And the first one was, hey, Tigre, my husband's leaving around six. I'll see you later. And the, and the daughter was like, oh, my God, mom. And the mom is like numb. She cannot believe what is happening. And then they do a discovery. And it's, a, it's, it's a, you know, uh, yeah. un pugilato, un pugilato. There's a, they're going to be no, you know what I love? I love that the, just the term, hey, tigre, which means, you know, it's customized to urban Latinx. Uh, right, right. Right, right, right. right, right, right. So, so how many characters are in the entire play? Eight. 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 And I understand you have some nice names attached to even the reading of June 22nd. Oh, yes. Uh, legendary, legendary. And what a nice lady. Oh, my God. Judy Torres. I mean, you can't say freestyle without Judy Torres. She's such a nice lady. And we have a mutual respect for each other. And I think she she's brought on as, as the mother in the play. And she brings this uh, new uh, nuance to it. She's really good. This subtle but direct. It, it, you, I hope you come see it. It's lovely. I, I, you know, I saw her other show, uh, No Reason to Cry. So um, oh, her acting yeah. chops are on point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I went to see it also. I went to see it also. What a fan base she has. The people just love her because she's a humble, down to earth person. You know, really. I, I mean, I can't believe how, how nice she is. You know, really. And great. of course, you know, she's the queen of freestyle. <laughs> so. Yeah. It, right? I, I think that she's the queen of freestyle, even though they have so many people. She's the, the top dog there, right? Yeah. yeah, very 
her pieces of timeless. All right, I'm I'm getting subjective here. All right? And I love all my freestyle artists because that's as far as I'm concerned, so I, those, yeah. that, those are our culture classics. Yes. Right? Yes. Music. And so um just to to provide people with a little background and, and some context as to how it is that you um got together with Felix with regards to like his previous run of growing up in Solace, which did very well. He had um a huge success with that show and you did mention the pandemic and you did mention having him on your show and you did mention how he uh, propositioned you to possibly uh, act in this and, and then you decided boom one day you were going to be a director now what kind of relationship have you two formulated since wow <laughs> um i respect felix a lot I think uh, sometimes when I when I've been a, a little down, he's believed in me more because he went to the show, uh, to my podcast, and he saw a side of me that was inhibited. You know, I was we were just all over the place, and it was funny. We had timing, and he said, Sixto, you got something here. I would like maybe we could work together one day." And I was like, "Okay," you know, I didn't think much of it, and I left. But his name stood in my, you know, in, in the back of my mind somewhere. And I know he has all, besides the day in the crib, I think that Felix Rojas has uh, a, a whole bunch of plays w waiting to be done, which hopefully this will open up the floodgates to a lot of his work and stuff. Uh, we, we have a mutual respect for each other. I trust his writing. He trusts me. Uh, I, and, and we're going to go. But I, I talk to him about everything. I ask about a thousand questions about the script. I ask him about this and this and uh, anything that has to do with the script. I want to know. Where does she come from? What's her backstory? What's this? We want to entertain the people, but also get the message out that this could happen to you. This right. You know. <laughs> and I think we're going to end on that note of reality, yeah. of reality yeah. of like, yeah. this can happen to you because that's yes. the storytelling. It's an, it's an everyday situation or yes. a day, right? Because that is the name of the play. It's a day in, a day in the crib. Sixto yes. Ramos, everyone. Thank you for being with us, Sixto. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. I can't wait to see you. And um, thank you for doing what you do and bringing all these Latino people from around the country and the world together in your show. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Oh, it's my privilege and pleasure. Thank you for being here. Once again, you guys, Sixto Ramos, actor, and director. He's actually the producer as well of the stage reading of A Day in the Crib, which is set to take place Thursday, June 22nd at 7 p.m. at La Mama Experimental Theater, which is located at 66 East 4th Street in Manhattan. If you're interested in tickets, you can visit La Mama org and for more on Sixto, you can check him out on IG at Sixto Ramos Show. All right, Thank don't you. go anywhere. There's more open when we return.